All right, welcome back, everyone. Today is the last day of the class, CIS 126. So if you've made it this far in the summer, congratulations, you're about to finish up the class. Now, we're going to do one final bit of coding, and then I'm also going to show um, about applying for the certificate. So assistants, please remind me later in the day to cover that. After I do the main coding, don't let me forget about also applying for the certificate. Uh, so if you all took this class in the summer and you are gonna pass the class, you're probably gonna earn the certificate. So we're gonna cover how to apply for it because it's not automatic. You have to apply for it, but I'll show you that at the end of the day after our main code here. So um, the final bit of code to add to our project is sound. Now at the moment, if I play my game, um, obviously, I have lots of great ideas to add more to my game, more rooms, more bosses, more side quests, etc. I've got more that I could do. But obviously, we're at the end of the semester and the final deadline is Sunday. So I think if you're able to do all of the things that you're learning so far, you should probably get a good grade. If you want to go beyond that, uh, after you turn in, the assignment, then maybe you could add to it as time goes on. So as a reminder, so far what the game does, we, um, we have the game, we have the basic navigation, tap something to go somewhere, first screen. Then we have the next um, screen where now there's more interaction, there's things that don't do anything, just a fun animation. And then obviously the important part here is dragging objects and hit detection. So now it takes us to the next place. This next room here, you've got multiple branching locations reminding you that you can make things transparent and still they will be clickable um, or you can make things semi-visible like that. And obviously if I go to the right, now there's a boss to battle. I, if I don't do it in time, I get, I get defeated. But if I defeat the boss, then that is triggering code that checks, has the boss been killed, yes or no? If yes, then I can go to the end and I get to the end. Now, right here, you can then exit the game um, or restart the game. On the other direction, the last thing that we did was we started to add the random numbers. We have those random keys, and I only put in three. You probably want to put more so that it's more random, more, um, a little bit more exciting. Because if you go to the left, now you have this time limit of, oops, something's coming to get me. Did I press it in time? I didn't press it in time. And now game over. So right here, it should be set up, replay or exit. I'm going to let you do it because if you can do it properly on the good ending, you should be able to do it on the bad ending. So you want the bad ending here to either replay or to exit. Now the game works. And of course, we can add more to it. But now what we want is sound. We want music to play in the background and we want sound to play when we interact. So for example, when we're at the um, main door here, I want it to play a little sound when I open the door, like the door is squeaking. And then when I go to the um, front door, and I break the window, I want the sound of breaking window. Obviously, once you learn this, you can then add the sound of the tree breaking or the sound of the door rattling. And so there's different sound effects that you can add in different parts of the game as you interact, as well as background music. So we can have, we're going to have a certain music play at the beginning here when you're looking at the main screen and help. We're going to have a different soundtrack playing when you're at the main parts, parts of the game. Uh, front door, side doors, etc. And then we're going to have different sound um, at the end of the game as well. So three different soundtracks that will play. And all of that will happen through code. You'll be able to play it through code. Also, when you're running it on a real device, you're running the game. And then let's say you go back home you want the music to pause, 
when you come back to the game, the music to start again. So those are the things that are, okay, obviously it should do that, but no, it won't do that until you program it. Computers are dumb. You have to program them to make them do what you want. So to set ourselves up here, I need to add the music that I'm going to use. And like I said, I've got music for you um, on Canvas, or if you're in the room here, you can get it from the data files folder. So I copied the game sounds folder onto my desktop. And in here, we have a few sounds. I'm gonna play a few of these to give you a preview. Remember, if you wanna hear these yourself, you have to use the headphones. But I have BG, 4 dash, BG, it's coming, BG, the rain, and then SFX, sound effect, crash, debris, knife, monster, wood, creek. So playing, I'll play the sound for a moment. If you're at home, you're not gonna be able to hear it, but if you're here in the room, you'll hear it. other ones. And another background. Three different sounds. They obviously have a, a feeling to them. One is more happy, maybe one is more scary, etc. And that's what adds to any game. It's the visuals and the sound that help enhance things. And I've got some sound effects here. These are going to be short little sounds that play. Like, for example, maybe when I break the, uh, the window... another sound, another breaking sound, got some uh, knife sounds, Easter sounds, The wood. All right, so these sounds, I can use them to put them into my game. And I got them basically from the, um, from the various uh, online uh, sites for music. So here you can go to Pixabay, you can go to Free Music Archive, you can also um, make your own sounds, I guess. And uh, for, for you to get a good grade in the assignment, you have to have sound and music playing in your project via code. You have to use code to make these work. Previously, we saw that we can add music to a layer for the movie, which is fine because the movie just plays by itself. It's not interactive. But for the game, we need to have um, sound play in different times, in different ways. And therefore, it's all about, um, it's all about uh, doing it through code. So step one, I need to put those sounds into my project. So up on the file menu, file import to library. Going to go get those sounds. And so if you got it from uh, Canvas or if you got it from the desktop web design folder, data files, uh, so inside of the game sounds, I need all of them. So you can uh, you can click the first one and hold shift and click the last one, select them all. We're going to add all of these. We may not use them all, but we're going to add them to our project. Although be aware that the more sound that you add to your project, the bigger the file gets. Right now, my project file, how big is this? My project file. Um, Right now, it is currently 444 kilobytes, so that's how big it is right now. But when you start to add music, it'll get bigger and bigger and bigger. So it'll be slower to upload or download. It's going to get bigger. So I'm going to add all the sounds. Get imported. They're going to get added to the library. 
They're all right here. We have a little icon to show you its music. There's the different names for them. You've also got that simple play button. Play and stop. So we've seen this before when we added music to the movie and uh, now it's part of the game project. I'm gonna save my file. And if I look at, if I look at my file now, a moment ago, it was 444 kilobytes and now it's 34,738. So it got really big, but as long as you've got the space for it on your USB or at home, it'll be okay, but it got very big. Okay, so to use the sounds, we're not going to put it onto a layer. Um, we'll start with the with the very beginning here. We want music to play here um, when the game starts, but we're not going to do it with a layer. We're going to do it through code, similar to when we uh, took an item out of the library and put it onto the stage. We added linkage. Well, we need to add linkage. We need to add an instance name in the library. Same way with music. So let's start off with the, um, I want to use, yeah, I want to use the happy sound here as the main music. So we need to add linkage. Same as before, right click, right click your music, properties. So opens up the sound properties. We have a tab up on top action script. So it's a little different than a regular sound file or a regular video or graphic file, because on that one, when you go to properties, looks like this and it looks advanced, right? But with a sound, when you first go to properties, it's gonna show you the information about the sound, et cetera. And then you have to go to action script. Then that looks familiar. I have to export for action script. Export on frame one and it'll give it some class name. Now I can leave the class name or I can change it. So whatever makes sense, but that's the instance name that we used to need to use in the code. And you can change it whenever you want, but I'll click okay. It's going to remind you this has not been created before. Do you want to create it? Yes. Okay. Now this shows it has linkage. And from here, I can double click to, to change it if I want. But I'm going to keep it the suggested name. The suggested name is based on the name of the file, actually. So if the name of your file is very, very, very long, it's going to have a very long linkage, which doesn't matter, but it's going to be a long name. You can shorten it if you want. That has linkage, just like my keys had linkage. So now I can start to use code to make it play one at a time. So let's go over to our code. And this is all happening on, remember to keep track of where am I at, what frame, what scene. Right now we're on the title scene, frame one. And when we first started working with all of our code, one of the first things that we did was we set ourselves up here for these extra abilities of code. One of them that we added was sound. We want to be able to have sound in our project. So we wrote that code a while ago, just like we want the ability to have uh, touch capability. We want the ability to detect events. Uh, we want the ability to be able to load up paths, basically. Uh, so these things are there already. Now, for the music, it's going to be similar to when we set up the keys. When we were over on the hall left, we had to create a key that was based on a linkage name in the library with a new instance of it and then other stuff. Similar to that with the sound. Let's go to the end of our code. That up here, uh, create variable for soundtrack. VAR, calling it whatever we want. I'm gonna call this um, maybe music title. 
So it's music that is going to play, it's background music that is going to play in my title screen, colon. Here's where I use the linkage name. So I can just double click it from here so that I can copy it. Put it in equal to a new instance of the same thing with parentheses. So it's very, very similar to when we were working with the keys. We had to create a variable with some unique name. It is a type, a data type of the name of what it is in the library. We instantiate a new instance in memory based on the exact same name, parentheses, and that's it. A music is a little bit more complicated than, than the graphic because do we start playing the music at the beginning or not? You might say, well, of course, I wanna start at the beginning of the sound, the game just started, I want to start playing the sound. But think about this, the sound, for example, of rain over here, for in the very beginning, it's kind of quiet for a little while, and then eventually it kind of builds up to more. Somewhere here, like, I don't know, like 10 seconds in. So maybe I want to start to play my sound at 10 seconds, not at zero seconds, but maybe, you know, two minutes. It's a 10 minute song and I want to start at two minutes. So I can set myself up for the code to start at the beginning of the sound or at any place in the sound. I can also set up play the sound twice and then stop or play the sound over and over and over and over as I'm playing the game. So there's a lot I can do with sound. And we have to think about also, like I said, when it's on a real device, unless you program it, you're playing the game and then you want to go check your email and you switch to another app, it's going to keep playing the sound even if you're in another app, unless you program it to stop the sound. And then when you come back to the game, play the sound from that point forward, like pausing it. So again, you have to program it to do all of that. It's not automatic, even though it looks automatic when you use someone else's game or app. So we'll further set up here, uh, set up to start at the beginning of the, of, the, of the file of the MP3. Once you know how to make it start at the beginning, you can set it up to start anywhere you want. AR music title play and sound channel capital S capital C instance of or linkage name dot play parentheses zero colon 10. So we have to do some sort of behind the scenes things that animate will keep track of the, the playback of the sound. Right now, basically here, it's in memory, but now we're gonna actually set it up to start to play. And we need to do all of this and put it in a variable. And this variable is of data type sound channel. And here, this is where we're saying started at zero, comma, play it 10 times. Have this music just play 10 times. If I want it to play one time and then stop, it'll just be silent. We change that to one. If we want it to play you know, five times, 15 times, and then stop, we do that. So just play some amount of time. Now this number here is in milliseconds. So we'll say note, uh, playback time is in milliseconds. So 1000 milliseconds equals one second. So if I want my music to start um, 10 seconds from the beginning, it's 10,000 milliseconds. Don't write a comma for the separator. You just write the whole number like that. So 10,000 milliseconds is 10 seconds. So I'm starting 10 seconds from the beginning of the sound. You have to do math. 
if you want to figure out, okay, this is a 10 minute song. It starts at one and a half minutes. So you have to convert one and a half minutes into seconds and then convert that into milliseconds. It's a little multiplication. But obviously at the start of the game, started at, at the beginning. In order for us to be able to pause and play the sound, we need to know at what millisecond did we stop the sound. And then when we come back to the game, start it again at that millisecond, not at zero, but at that millisecond. Animate can keep track of, your song has played for a thousand milliseconds. It can keep track of all of that, no problem. We just need to create a variable for it to do that. So we'll do that right here. Keep track of which millisecond the music played. We are uh, music title uh, pause. This is a data type of number, capital um, N equal to zero. When the game first starts, we're at the beginning of the music. So we, we haven't played the music yet to keep track of where are we in the music. So we start at zero. Later on, this number will change to detect, oh, you've played 7,000 milliseconds. It'll keep track of that so that then we can unpause it. Okay, so this is all setting ourselves up here. Then, next line. Stop any previous music. Sound mixer, capital S, capital M, dot stop all, capital A, parentheses. You're going to see that as you start to play with sound, unless you pay attention, you're going to overlap your sounds. Similar to when those keys appeared on that screen, if you didn't remove the keys, when you went to the next screen, the keys would be overlapping on the screen. That happens also with music. So one way to stop any music that is currently playing so that other music can play, we have stop all. Um, that's especially like, let's say you're at the game over screen, there's music playing there. If you play again, it will stop the previous game over music and then play the new music. Now, logically from here, okay, we have a play and now we've got to stop. Yes, technically we are telling it to start to play and then it's telling it to stop. Yes, next code here, we'll fix that because this is again, knowing how this works, we have to do these shenanigans of turning on and off the music in a certain way because uh, I know how the game should work. So trust me on that. Next up. This part here is going to be about uh, detecting when is the game actually running versus when it's not running and then play the music as necessary. So we'll say uh, detect when game starts to start music. We'll, be, we will do detect when game is not running to stop music. So there'll be two event listeners here that will keep track of when is the game, when is the music playing, when is it not? This is what's also going to take, take precedence over the play over here, because code runs in sequence. First do this code, make the music play, then do this code, make the music stop. But then do this code, is the game currently running? Yes, then play the music. And then do this code, if necessary, stop the music. So this line is kind of weird. I'm gonna just copy and paste it over here and then I'll explain it. Um, this is some of this native code. Go through it here. So we have native application. This is again, the code that is kind of paying attention to what's happening if it's on a real device, similar to when we exited the game. Then again, Native application, lowercase n, for whatever reason, that's just the way it is. So we've seen that before. We've got an event listener. We've seen event listeners before. This is um, this is uh, listen for something. Now I'm just putting this on the next line for you to read it, but it should be all on one line. 
can't read it, so I'm putting it on another line. In the parentheses, there is some event. We've dealt with events before. Did you tap it? Did you drag it? What did you do? An event of activate. Is the game activated on a device or the simulator? If the um, uh, activation event is detected, play some code. I'm going to change this one actually. Um, similar name over here. And music title play. A function that will actually play the music. So because we make up the name that we want here, it can be anything, of course. And I want it to have the prefix that we've been using, FN for function, capital letters for readability. Yes, this is different. I have it lowercase up here, and I have it uppercase here. You can keep it lowercase. It doesn't matter as long as you keep it consistent. But for readability, I'm capitalizing it. And again, this should be on one line. I just need to put it on multiple lines for you to be able to read it. Next line, then we have to explain what is the meaning of that brand new function. There is an event here, a generic event, full and void, curly braces seen a version of this over and over, we're going to click a button and it's going to do something. What's the something? This. And so I need to further write my code here. Break that to the next line. And just a little marker that this is the end of that code. Trace it for a message. Feedback. Lastly, code is the actual code that's making it play the music. So that needs to exist here. Without the VAR, be careful, no VAR here. At the top here, we're, we're creating the, we're creating the uh, object, the variable, putting it into memory, getting it ready to play. Don't put VAR here because that would be to recreate the variable. We don't want to recreate it. We just want to use it, basically. And um, we're saying that we are playing Vic at some starting point. When the game starts, obviously started at zero. But what this is doing is as the game is running, play it from wherever the sound is at. So we're not resetting it every time back to zero. This is basically when you exit and return to the game. When you want to return, unpause it. So we're not starting from zero. We're starting from the variable that is being kept track of over here. At the start of the game is zero, but then later on it changes, of course. And again, let me put this to the next line just for you to read it. It's back on one line in a moment. This obviously like this so that you can see it, but I will, they, they do appear on one line. So native code, listen for activation of the game. If you detect activation of the game, run this function. This function is saying, play my music from some starting point. At the beginning of the game, starting point is zero. Later on in the game, starting point is 1,000 or 99.78, whatever. Play it 10 times. fix this in one moment, but then to combine these next up here, then detect when the game is not running. Well, I'm, the game starts 
music is playing, the counter should increment. If I pause the game, stop the counter, music counter, keep track of where the music was at, stop the music, so that when I return to the game, restart the music at that counter. One of these lines, it's very similar. It's very similar to this top one here. Be that one. It's, it's almost all the same code, but guess what? Instead of activate, what's the opposite of activate? Deactivate. So it's all of that code. Plus, it's not about title play, it's about title pause. We have a listener that's detecting when the uh, game is running, when the game is active, activated. We have a listener detecting when the game is, oh, sorry, deactive, deactivate. We have a listener to detect when the game is deactivated. We will then create a function that deals with pausing the music. And all of this is on one line. Check when the game is not running so that when we can then have our function here. The event. This one actually is a, this one is different. This is in one of the only places in our whole code where all of these functions return a value of void. What does that mean? Don't quite worry about it. This one though is different. This one does have numbers. So be very careful here. This is the, this is the only function that we've used so far in the whole semester that returns a value of number. The previous ones don't give you a response void. It just goes off into the void. It just does it but it doesn't answer anything, basically. This one does something and it answers or returns a number. The number is what time in the music did we pause at. So be careful that that has that number. We'll note it here. Note, return value is number, not void. Reminder that that is different so that you don't so that when you're asking for help and your code doesn't want to work, your music just doesn't work, check that to make sure that that is return return value, uh, return object of number rather than void. Break this to multiple lines to be able to read it. Little trace message that this code running. And of this function is we need to detect at what point did we pause the music and then we actually have to pause the music so update uh, counter to see to note when music milliseconds paused so our variable keeping track of that is music title pause. That is now going to be set to whatever our currently music play is. And that is happening over on music title play as a property of position. In memory, it's playing the music and behind the scenes, it's playing inside of a variable. We have the ability to check what position and time is that variable currently at, that's position, that millisecond is being second, saved into pause. So now that's being updated so that when we return to the game, 
play the music at that millisecond. I suppose technically, maybe one millisecond later. Technically, I don't actually, I'm not going to do this, but I guess technically it ends at the exact millisecond and then starts at the exact millisecond. No one's going to notice. But technically, I suppose you want to add one more millisecond ahead. It's going to be so minuscule you won't notice. So don't worry about that. But that's keeping track of the um, music. Okay, now actually stop the music playing. The whole point of this is once we detect we exit the game, pause the music, or else it'll keep playing if you're in any other app. So that's the same code up here. Stop everything. That's the universal stop everything. And these things that are happening here that we're keeping track of are happening inside of the function in the little world of the function, in the scope of the function, unless we output it, unless we return it back to the rest of the app. So final code here, return the value of paused time. The rest of the code, and that is return whatever this value we detected is. Okay, so it's kind of a lot of code, but starting from here is all of the music stuff right here. We're going to do it again in a moment for the other scenes, but I want to check if this works. So let me just check my code here. I haven't checked if it worked yet, so let's see if no errors. I'm going to debug this onto the simulator. It should not to give errors. Okay, there's an error. No, no worries. We'll fix it. So let's see. Call to a possibly undefined method play through a reference of static class, illegal assignment, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I'm going to double click my first error. So what did I miss here? Music title, play, sound channel, new, background four, play, music title, pause. Sound channel, is that sound channel? Oh, okay. Yes. So because I copied it out of the top over here to save a little bit of effort, I didn't need to copy the data type here. Um, all of this at the top here is properly set up to say, I'm going to create a variable. This variable will hold sound channels. The name of the variable is this. Set it to that. Okay. But when I actually then use it, I don't need to re-explain. It's a sound channel. I just use the variable, start to play it at that position in time. So remove that part. Um, it gives the error, as we saw there, about you're trying to redefine, basically, you're trying to redefine the variable, but you already defined it as a sound channel, basically. So that's, that's that error. Usually when you fix the first error, the other errors automatically fix. So I'm going to fix that one. And then I'll run it again. Probably fix the other errors. Okay, maybe not. That's okay. Call to possibly same place. Um, okay, one more thing. Uh, no, not not another new. So that's the problem of copy and paste. Sometimes it helps. Sometimes it's too much. So not new again here. Created the. Oops, we already. What did I do? We already created the object and such in memory. Up here, we're not recreating it here. We're just using it. So no var, no sound channel, no new. It's the variable re. Play the variable with, but not recreate the variable. Okay, save that.
still there. Okay, what is the one more thing here? Um, to play, welcome music. Oh, okay. Uh, copy and pasting again. So, no, wait, wait, wait that's right. Uh, Sound channel, new big four dash play. Just one moment. Let me check my notes here. So we got welcome music, welcome music dot play, big four dash. Oh, okay. Came back again from copy and paste. Uh, so at the top here, we also do not need a new. Sorry about that. So we needed the new. We needed new at the very, very beginning to grab a copy of it from the library. And then we use it here. So no new here. All of that's good. Sound channel VAR, good. Then over here, also not new, not VAR, not sound channel, and not new here. So now let's try again. Right, so this reminds you, when you have notes, check your notes carefully. So here's another mistake I made. Um, so I put here um, the instance name, the linkage name from the library. But this needs to be the variable up here. This variable is holding the reference to the linkage. So it's not that we add the actual linkage, we add the variable pointing to the linkage, which then should also be down here. We're not playing the linkage. We're playing the variable of music. Here, which then I guess it'll be an error in a moment. Position, pause. Music title play. No, we had it right over here. Music title play position. So music title, music play, music pause, music title. Music title. Music pause. Music play. So you see that even with someone with experience, if you if you don't notice your details, you're gonna have a bad time. So okay, I think I got it this time. So we'll we'll see. Okay, so finally. Okay, game music is playing. My simulator, if I click outside of the app, as if I were on another app, right? I've exited the music pause, great. If I come back to the game, back to the game, listen to where I stop it at. There was a little beat right there, right? So I paused at that beat. If I come back to the game, it came exactly back at that beat. So there's a drum right there. If I come back to the game, the drum. So that's working. A lot of setup, a lot of paying attention to the names of all of these things. Um, We'll have the other sounds to play. We have to do the same thing, very similar to all of our other two sounds. And it'll be again, the problem about 
what's the name here, 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 but that's why we're going to do it three times to get used to it. Um, there's the part of the name of the variable as it is the linkage. The linkage name is here. The linkage name is here. Then we make a variable for what scene we're at. And then we use that here and here and here when it's playing. Have a variable to keep track of pausing that soundtrack. We use that here and here and here. Okay, and then we've got our code for um, actually playing the particular soundtrack at X position for X number of times. We've got the code to stop all the music. We've got the code to detect when we're playing the game. We've got the code to detect when we're not playing the game. So let's do this one more time, then we'll take a break uh, for the main music, I suppose. Or let me ask all of you, actually, we've spent this long. Do we want to take our first break? Because it's break time. Or do we want to do the code for one more uh, first and then the break? What do you all think? Let's take a break. I want to take a break, too. <laughs> Let's take a break. Let's take a break. And um, then we'll uh, do this code for the main music and then the ending music. So I can't fit it all in one screen, but I'm going to try to put it all on one screen. Then we'll take a break. We'll continue. So they can get it mostly visible. It's the top part there, so I can't fully show it all at once. Let me show it this way. Over here. kind of fits all completely. That's all the complete code so far. If people want to take a photo or screenshot it, obviously I'm going to upload it to Canvas. Yeah, it doesn't really all fit at once. It does. So that's all the code so far. So let's take a little break. It's 101. We'll take a break until 111. So, um,
other land, okay. Oh, I'm working. It's okay. It takes a while. Sorry. Oh. All right, everyone, let's continue. Let's add this next uh, bit of code to get this to work. So at the moment, we have this code that works on the title. That's very exciting. When we play the game, I've got music in my game. On my simulator, every time I click somewhere else, it's going to pause the music. That's normal. But if I then go to help, there it is. So it's just, it behaves a little weird on the simulator. When you're running it on the real device, it'll be more accurate. So let me just show that again. On my simulator, I have to touch the window. And when I go to help, actually, that'll be if I turn that on and off and touch back here, it doesn't detect it. Okay, so it's just a little weirdness. So I'm in the help screen, it'll play the music. If I go back, it'll keep playing it. Now, the um, I want new music under main. As the main game is playing, I want new music to start happening here. So let's go to your first screen. Let's go to the gate. And we're gonna set ourselves up very similarly to on the first screen. All right, step one, I need to have my music uh, set up with linkage. And I wanna use, I want to use that one. So I'm going to use the 
it's coming music similar to a moment ago right click properties action script panel activate export that's the linkage name okay it'll once again say this doesn't exist uh, before so generate it sure so now in the linkage column i've got two musics with that linkage with their own linkage in the actions of this main gate i'm going to add very similar to what happened on the title we will need to create variables three variables stop any previous music create listeners play keep track of a pause and such so it'll be very similar what's going to be a little different is the first thing that i want to do this is inside of the main screen now the main game um first stop any previous music so i the logic of it i i know i programmed music on scene one now that i'm on scene two i want any previous music to stop so now that I program that there will be music previously playing, so I must stop that first. That's where we've got our stop all sound mixer uh, dot stop all case S, but uppercase A parentheses. It's often a good idea anyway, as one of the first bits of code to stop any previous music, especially if you're controlling it via, uh, if you're controlling music via code. So stop any previous music. Now we'll start to set ourselves up variables for the main soundtrack. We are, uh, previously I was calling it music in the title and then music in the title play and music in the title pause. So I think here music main, I'll write it properly in a moment, but while it's in my mind, music main play and music main pause. The data type of the, um, if each of these is a little different, what type of data do they hold? On the first one, it's the instance name from the library, the linkage name. So double click to copy, paste. Then the music main play data type, that one is sound channel, with capital C and, and S. And then the pause is keeping track of a number. While I'm here, this is also zero. This main music, when I get to this scene, it never played before, so set it to zero. That's easy. I guess working a little backwards here might be logical. Uh, here we've got the music of main, uh, set that to play, starting at zero, 10 times. That's what was causing issues previously. So this music will play. This music is defined from the library. So new instance of that um, linkage. So some big variable keeping track of the of the of the item in the library. A variable keeping track of is this has this been played? Is it running around in memory? Uh, and then a variable to keep track at what position is the music currently at to determine pause and play. This is a new instance from the library. This is the play command at zero, play ten times, and we started at the beginning. Okay. So then, um, 
the play is going to be all based on is the app running or not and the like. So the uh, the event listener to detect the game state. So native application dot native application like before. Uh, we're giving that an event listener. Parentheses. So it's got the event of activate, all capital letters. I don't know which is which, if it's uppercase, lowercase capitals, it's just something you have to memorize depending on the code. You have to memorize it's a capital N here, but not a capital N here. And then you have to memorize it's E and L here. And you have to memorize it's capital E there. And it's all caps here. You just have to memorize some of these things. I don't know if there really is a reason for why things are uppercase or lowercase. Sometimes you just have to memorize it. But then comma, when you invent your code there, that's when you can determine exactly what it's called. And so that's going to be based on as my music is playing, music main play, function music main play, next line, I'm creating a function definition of music main play, function music main play, Parentheses, colon, void here, curly braces. This is the event. Capital matter, capitalization matters there. I'm breaking these curly braces to the next line. See, there's a lot of repetition. On, on the one hand, that's good because if I know that it worked once one way, if I copy and paste it, duplicate it, should mostly work. It's bad in terms of, well, that's kind of repetitive or mind numbing or annoying or mechanical, same thing over and over. Trace, just to note that this is running. And then the part about, well, our music, play, is now music object um, or music uh, music main dot play actually start to play it at some position zero when the game starts and times. First get to the scene, music pauses at zero, start at the beginning of the sound. So the main music play has been actually activated to play once we detect that the app is running here. Detect when app game runs. Detect when game pauses. Yeah, native application, add event listener, event deactivate, then FN music pause, and then its function definition, native application dot native application dot add event listener. See semicolon. Event deactivate. Some function. I'll base that on the pause. Function pause. Logically, hopefully to remember, I know even though I say over and over, use this logic to memorize what you wrote, I forget 10 seconds later. So it's okay to keep referring back to your own code and copy and paste whenever possible and the like. And so I've got my music play based on the 
playing of it all and the pausing of it all. So next line function definition of that. This is the one, remember this one's a number. This returns a number, not a void, not nothing. It returns something. This is also based on just some event happening. So we've had events that are a click. We've had events that are a click and drag. Well, here's an event that's all about is the music playing or not? Events can be many things, not just direct interaction. Maybe after the music ends, some other music plays. So everything's an event. Break that next over. Message that this is running. So what's happening here, it's let's check the position of the music playing. Keep track of it in the variable. Stop the music. Return the value for the rest of the app to pay attention to. So the um, so the music of main pause now is being set to the music of main play, its position. the value of the position of the music on the main screen playing, save it in the pause variable. Um, in the sound mixer, stop all. Turn whatever is in that variable to the rest of the app. So this is 95% the same as what we had on the title. The things that have changed, of course, are the new names of the variables. Every variable is unique. So when you're creating variables like here, they should all be unique. Yeah, details are different. What's the linkage? All of that's the same on the right, basically. This is all the same about detect when the game is playing or not. Then the uniqueness of which function to run on detection, the uniqueness of which particular sound, which particular sound, the same here, stop everything and return. So similar. When we do the game over screen, that'll be very familiar. But let's see if this works. So I'm going to debug. Fingers crossed. Didn't cross them hard enough. Okay, so what did I miss here? Uh, oh, uh, even uh, access possibly undefined property native application. I misspelled appli. There's no appliation, of course, but there is an application. There we go. So one character in my case was wrong. Native application, not native application. So make sure you check that. Now, why didn't it show an error message and such before I ran the code? I know other coding apps kind of dynamically show you errors as you write. Unfortunately, Adobe Animate is not uh, does not have that feature. You don't get your errors until you try to run your code. So in other apps, it would have detected at that moment, maybe. But OK, so edit my code, save my code, debug my code. We have music playing here. I activate touch layer, start. I started and I'm at the gate. And then the rest of my game. Get to the ending. We're going to program ending music by replay. Going back to a beginning part, music starts again. Good. 
then the um, ending, the ending music. So I have an example. It's the same music, good ending, bad ending. You probably want music for bad ending and you probably want music for good ending. I'm going to use the same one for both. So this seems to be working. Now I'll go to the end of the game, then we'll add the sound effects for the individual items in a moment. So similar, going to the end, I'll start with the good ending. Good ending. Well, I've got the one music waiting for me, the rain. So that needs linkage. Right click. Properties, action script, export. There's the name, that's fine. Click OK, click OK. That has linkage. So in the good ending, similar. sound. So that was a sound mixer stop. And we've got variables for this scene. So three variables. Music of good of end good, music and good play, music and good pause. This one's a number, start at the beginning. This one is a sound channel. Two, music of end and play from the beginning times. Yeah, uh, first variable is a data type of that linkage, plus a new instance in memory of that. So we had a few bumps the very first time we did it, a little smoother the second time. Here's the third time, even smoother. When you want to then further add even more music throughout your project, if you can do these things over and over, it should work. Okay, then... Um, Event listeners, those native application dot native application dot add event listener. Of them in a moment. One of them is the event. The other one is the event and right here. I, I'm doing what I don't recommend when I teach this. Don't do two things at once. Do one thing at a time. I'm trying to do a shortcut here. So hopefully it doesn't uh, come back to bite me. But logically, I know I'm going to have an activate. I know I'm going to have a deactivate. Spelled right, of course. Both of them are listeners of the native application. Both of them have some event, activate versus deactivate. Both of them will run some function. There's the function of in this particular scene. Play. Pause. Is 
the repetition of it, the logic of it, the patterns of it. Function definitions for each. I'm showing it here. I could show this slightly different where on the previous screens, it's all been very, very in order logically. As a beginner, I think that's helpful. Uh, so variables, then the listener, and then the definition of the function. So this is kind of a little chunk of code together. This is a chunk of code together. Oftentimes, when you get a little bit more advanced, uh, you would do it slightly different like this, where you could put both the event listeners close together because they're the same type of thing. And then both of the functions this is just another way to do it it's going to give you the same end result this is again a little bit more advanced slightly different than what i showed before we're very, very in order, but there's the style of programming of, okay, it works. Maybe it's a little messy, it works. There's a style of programming that it works, but it's also clean or it's also elegant. Elegantly written code is nice. And what I'm doing here, for example, I'm grouping together all event listeners. I'm grouping together all variables, all functions. I'm grouping together all concepts of code. The previous ways that I was showing was just all in order as I thought of it. But here, more elegantly written code is something like this. One is not better than the other, although some people will argue that elegant code is better because it looks nicer. But I'm not that far to or snobby to say elegant code is better. I like elegant code, but as a beginner, do whichever version makes sense to you. If it makes sense to you, how I showed so far over here, of you know, the chunks of code are grouped together then because right, we've got the listener and then the result of the listener we've got the listener and the result of the listener whereas right now I'm making it a little different where you've got all listeners together and then all functions together so these are events a lowercase event and then uppercase event Case event and uppercase event. The first one is void. The second one is number, capital N. Both of these break down to the next line. message or an end note. Have a trace. And of course, each one's a little different. One is all about playing the music. One is keeping track about where the music got paused. So then the play, music in the end screen, the good end screen, play the music in the end screen of good, main object, play it, going from where it was paused or starting from where it was paused. Oops, a little space here, no space on that. Might not actually cause an error, but no space on that. Uh, start from that starting point 10 times. Versus here, stop anything that may be playing. Well, track the position first, then stop it. 
so um, music of uh, pause that is being set to music of play. It's position. and good play position give that to me in music and good pause then stop the music and return whatever value we capture here and Right, so I'll test that now. Uh, a moment ago, that reminded me further about stopping and playing things. I think we need an, another stop somewhere. We'll see that in a moment. Um, okay, so let me play this. Let me check this out. So did I get any errors? Debug? Yep. That's okay. Did I misspell deactivate? Deactive, active eight, deactive eight, yes. D, is it active or activate? It's um, active eight. Yep, deactivate. Uh, deactivate. Activate, deactivate. On the instance of activating the app, on the instance of deactivating the app. Okay. Debug. Errors, yes, music. Debate touch, start, main music. Break in, go left, find the key, good ending. Previous music stopped, good. New music started, good. Replay, old music stopped, new music started. I play again. I win again. Music plays. Everything works. Okay, it seemed to all have worked. I thought I had heard something had overlapped a moment ago. Um, but the um, here's one thing that we'll add here. We we need to change something slightly. I, I don't. It might not be necessary, but just to be safe, when you're at the good ending. And we have here at the good ending, I want to replay. We are gonna go back to the beginning of the game. And all of the beginning of the game code should run. And all of this, yep. Um, I think to be safe, when we're there at the good ending, I want to further add here when I, when I replay, or we go back to the beginning, so stop current music. So this is happening in the go to replay to, to, to play the game again. Just add the uh, sound mixer, stop all. I think we'll be okay without it. Safe there. 
stop the current music, then go back to the first scene, or not the first scene, but the scene main. But I think because we already have on scene main, stop any previous music, I think we'll be okay. Um, I also, just to change it again here, uh, let's take us to, if you want to, you don't have to do this, I'm just testing it, but I'm gonna go back to the main title screen actually. I'm just gonna check something here. I'm not gonna put the stop everything just yet, and then I'll go back to the title. Just let me test one quick thing. Debug that. So that should obviously be playing the correct music. So never mind, because I clicked on. Okay, but actually it's playing two musics. So it's still playing the old music. The new music. So I think we do need, need this at the end here. So that's why I wanted to double check it because I remember from a previous semester. So we didn't need this code previously. We hadn't learned about music yet, but then now that we've learned about music, also stop the current music before going back to the title screen. When I went back to the first game screen, it wasn't an issue because that one's got the built-in stop previous music, but might as well set this up that when we leave this screen, stop the music, take us to the main title screen, play the title screen. So. Test that again. I think it just gets weird on the debugger every time I, the debugger's a little weird. I'll run it on a real device in a moment. All right, let me just run it on the, on the debugger just to confirm. Not on the debugger. Let me run it on the real device just to confirm because um, I think there's a slight difference in the um, simulator versus the real device. So let me just set this up to connect to the real device. Just the difference is that on the simulator, you have to click on the window to have the game and then click on the simulator window back and forth and such. So here it is running on the real device. Real device to have music, go to start. Playing the main music sound, good. Let me go to the ending. All my feedback is happening there. On the good ending, good ending music is playing on my device. I'm going to replay. So I am back at the beginning, but not playing the music. If I start, it is starting there. 
So I'm at the end again, I'm gonna restart. No music, okay, so let me test it. Maybe we don't actually need that, stop all. So this is always useful, test and retest, debug and rebug, and have other people test your project that have no experience with it so you can get all the details of it. Let's see. I'm at the title, start, I'm at the game. At the good ending, we play. Still not playing. Okay. Uh, so good ending. Home is running now at title, but music is not playing. So what am I missing here? Let me just double check my example code. So as I, I did say previously about uh, on Canvas, I since a week or two ago, I did upload a version of the game that I'm basically recreating with all of you. So everything that I'm doing has already been there. So if any of you have already looked at that, you, you had advanced knowledge. So let me just confirm. I feel that I'm missing a play. So that's how it looked on a previous semester. The drawings were slightly different on a previous semester. I was using a calligraphy brush. So anyway, back on the title screen. So we've got... Code of music, of play, of pause, of stop, of native etc. Okay. So that. I don't get that quite just right. That'll be okay because we also have to do the sound of the when you interact in with an object. That'll be similar to what we've seen here, except that it is triggered by um, it's triggered by the playing of a movie clip. We'll see that in a moment. So if it works properly in the example, I just need to double check my example code in a moment. If it doesn't work on the example, then it never worked. All right, so here's the example from a previous semester. Semester, it is working on there. Go to play, it's at the front door. Sound effect, breaking glass, uh, ending. Replay. Oh, it's also not playing at the very start of that. So on a previous semester, it didn't have the replay at the beginning. Okay, for the moment, then uh, I'm not going to worry about it just yet. Um, I'll come back to that. Or assistance. What you could do is see if you can get if you can check this out. So you can get the example that I've got off of Canvas, but actually you don't have access to Canvas. So never mind. Okay. I'll get back to you in a moment. Um, yeah, so you don't have access to the game at the moment here. So let me actually just save a copy onto the web design. So basically, I'm going to move on. But assistance, what you could do it is when you um, when you're at the when you're at the good ending and you go back to the title, the music isn't playing in the title. So you can play with that. If you can get it, that'd be fine. If, it, if you can't get it, that's okay. But uh, let me put a copy of that into the 
network folder just for you to try to play with it to find that. So in the network folder, Zero eight zero two. That's the file. If you get a copy of that and just play with that, so that the sound does play when you go from the good ending back to the title, the main title should play. Play with that for a moment. As for us, okay. Let's add music to when we open up that gate. I know that will work. So when we're on the main screen and we hit the gate, it's going to um, play a sound. Well, we've got a sound waiting for us over here under sound effect Wood Creek. I want that to play when the door opens. Similar to adding linkage and adding a little bit of code. That's what we need here. So Wood Creek, right click, properties, export. That's the linkage name, good. OK, so we'll do that over and over. Now, this sound is going to play when the door opens. The door opens when we click it. So to remind us, the code in main is there is a gate button waiting for us to touch it. Once we tap it, we play some code. And the code that we're playing is we're doing a trace and we're making the symbol itself play. Its timeline has 50 frames or whatever but it's stopped and not until we press it does the timeline of the gate play. So this has to happen inside of the timeline or one way to do this is to have it happen inside of the timeline of the gate. So if I go to my gate symbol, main gate or door. So inside of the door in the library, double click that. And in here we've got the animation of it opening. Well, I want the sound to happen when the door starts to move. S symbol has a timeline and code. Stop the door swinging. Set it up that the door will start to swing at about line six or frame seven, I mean, five or whatever. So uh, I'm going to set it as soon as it's going to start to move, which is, which is frame five. I want new code here. I want the code to uh, play that sound. So F7, new blank keyframe. This is all happening inside of the symbol. So in the symbol of the gate, we're going to need the code for the uh, that creek. That looks familiar. Um, we've got a variable called whatever, creaking. And it's the instance of the linkage, SFX Wood Creek one. And it's a new instance of that code, parentheses, and then simply that play it. We didn't have to do anything else regarding sound channels and pause and all of that, because that other sound is more complex. Does that other sound play when, um, the game is playing when we pause, when we move from screen to screen. This one, it just plays once and it's done. Now we could set it in terms of repeating and number of times and at what position and everything, but um, we can leave it as is simply like that. This is the part where we would add from the beginning, play one time. Just a simple play. I'll put both examples here in case from X time and how many times. Maybe you want something to play. You want one of these sound effects to play 
um, more than one. Here it's just one time. That up variable for sound effect. Library. Play the sound. And then more advanced right here. More advanced x time and how many times. So the trick here, the difference here is that in any symbol that I want to apply sound to within its timeline, I am writing the code on a particular frame to create a new object based on the linkage and then simply play it. Let's see if that worked. For when we do the break the glass sound effect in a moment, it'll be very similar. There's the animation of the glass breaking in its own timeline. In its own timeline, I'm going to create the variable and make it play. And from the library, I'm going to add the linkage. Running on my device. Start. I'm at the door. Door squeaks. So it did it. I want the glass to break. So I need to need to do it there. So see, this is a lot easier than the um, than the main soundtrack playing. So something like this. I need to do this for the glass break. Step one in the library. So let's see, I've got crash and debris, which is which? Is that one? Is that one? Both sound fine. I'll do crash. So with crash, right click properties, action script, activate action script. The um, the symbol of the window let's see that's under um, front window here front window it's got a timeline of crashing same idea depending on its timing and so forth but uh, on my in my case on frame five is when it starts to crash so Blank keyframe on frame five. My code is going to be similar as before, but the difference, obviously, I'm just pasting that in to remind myself. But it's a VAR. This one is going to be, I don't know, crashing, whatever you want to call these things. colon linkage equal to new instance of linkage object. And then the machine is a play. So now when the timeline of the window starts to play, play the break sound effect. the sound effect of, let's say, the creature. I have some monster sounds there. So within the timeline where the creature exists, I want to do something very similar to that to create a, a variable for the creature sound and play. That's it. So let's see here on my real device. The door. See about breaking the sound. Let's go to the creature level. No sound, but if I want the sound of the creature, I need to add it to the timeline. Case with the creature. Let's see, this is happening on hall right. And in this case, the
doesn't have any, they don't have any animation on the creature. So um, I will add it just to the, directly to the, I'll add it directly to here. So as soon as a creature appears on frame 25, in my case, same sort of idea. I need to add linkage to one of the creature sounds. Then I create the variable on that frame and I press and I tell it to play. So that's way easier than the background music. So let's go with let's go with uh, uh, the first one, sure. So monster growl one. Mr. Growl one on frame 25 of my hall of right. Create a variable for that. We'll do monster, which has then the linkage of this instance of that. Then monster play. I think on this one, I do need it to have uh, from the beginning play three times. Whereas the other ones just play that crashing sound one time. I think on this one, we do want it to play some amount of times. If you only put a value, I want it to play three times. No, that's assuming start to play it at three milliseconds. Because it has to be milliseconds, comma, number of replays. So milliseconds, comma, number of replays. Loading it up, main music, gate. So go to the right. It's kind of low, but I hear the sound. Yeah, so that worked. So the monster plays there. Three times. Yeah, so that all worked. We spent today working with sound. I showed you about playing a background sound when the game first starts and the necessary aspect of adding linkage to your sounds in the library, about creating a main variable, about creating a play variable, a pause variable. I showed you then about the ability to stop all the sound that might be playing the listener for detecting when the game plays and dealing with it, the listener to detect when you are not playing the game and dealing with it. We did that three times on the title. We did it in the main game. Did it on the good ending. You will need to do it on the bad ending. So if you got it to work on the good ending, like I did here, this is all the code of the good ending. If you got it to work there, you need to do the same thing basically uh, for the bad ending. Now, of course, the names of these things, I'm at the good ending and good and good play and good pause, et cetera. So the, um, make sure all of those are named properly on every place that they need to be. So if you're doing it on the bad ending, music and bad, music and bad play, music and bad pause, function, music and bad play, et cetera. So all of those should make sense for you to do the ending. Then lastly, the sound effects that happen as a result of interacting with the, uh, with the, Objects is that you've got a, a short sound effect that plays by itself once 
as it triggers on the code. That gets us then to the end of the project. There's obviously more screens that I could create, more ideas that I have, more to do. But being at the very end of things and having our final deadline and our final lab time, we're going to end at this point. I'm going to upload my code to Canvas. You can take all of that I've done in my version of the game as a starting point and then do your own game. Obviously, you want to go in and change my graphics and make your graphics and maybe uh, all the other details of you. Don't just, if you feel you're falling behind, don't just take my code and change two things and turn it in. Obviously, I'm going to look at it. You have to change everything that is relevant. But most of you, I do see, have started your own game and you've been building onto it. So perfect. Keep doing it. And the final deadline is this Sunday. The final deadline for everything must be turned in this Sunday, 11.55 p.m. I cannot take any late work. If you feel like, well, I'm not going to be able to finish it, turn in what you have, even if it's not finished. You will definitely get a zero if you don't turn anything in, and every point counts. There are only uh, 50 points in this part two of the class, and if you got... Um, you know, a perfect 20 on the animation and 10 on the podcast, 30 out of 50 is not a good grade. You're going to get a D minus if you don't turn in the final project. Even if it's not fully complete and such, if I see that you did your own work, did some amount of effort, you'll get some amount of points um, to at least pass the class. So yeah, the deadline is coming up. It is the last final day. There's a few people here for, for help in lab. Great. Those of you that are there, there at home, we can try to give you help at home. But obviously, that's why I did say over and over, come in person to get help. That'll be the easiest way. I'm going to end the lecture at this point. I'm going to upload my example code to Canvas. Wrap things up. Uh, if you're here, you made it to the end of the class CIS 125 and 126. Congratulations.